congruent triangles. The word congruent means identical. In geometry, when we have two shapes that are identical, we call them congruent. You can see two congruent triangles here. And when shapes are congruent, all their corresponding parts are congruent. So you can see here every angle is the same across these two and every side is the same. Okay, so we're taking a little pause from circles for this lesson and moving to triangles. And you will see uh, how we'll use the lessons of this video in our circle work in the future. So this might be a little bit of a reteach for some of us as uh, you have likely learned about um, congruent triangles in the past, but review is always a good thing. So first of all, let's see if you can recognize congruent figures. In each of these rows, can you spot two figures that are congruent? Okay, in number one, A and B are congruent. Notice if you flip one of these here, you can get to have the same image. In row two, it's A and D. And in row three, it's A and C. I hope you had success uh, finding those congruent figures. Now let's talk about the big idea about congruent triangles. So, uh, first of all, congruent figures, as I have mentioned already, are figures with exactly the same size and shape. Uh, what is the geometric word for each transformation below? Because to, uh, to show that two figures are congruent, we often have to move them or move them or slide them, right? If you slid this over here, you could have them overlap and show they're congruent. Or if you flip this one, you can have them overlap and show they are congruent. Or if you turn this one, or if you enlarge this one. Okay, so what are the geometric words here? Well, the word for slide is translation. The word for rot uh, turn is a rotation. And the geometric word for flip is reflection. So make sure you remember these three words in particular. And here, when we see an enlargement happening, it's called a dilation. Okay, so in uh, these diagrams here, I want you to tell me, uh, first of all, are these two triangles congruent? And which of the transformations would you have to use in order to prove congruence? Okay, in this first one, yes, they are congruent. And if you did a reflection or a flip, right? If you flipped it like that, you would show congruence. Next one, how about this? Okay, they are congruent and you can use a rotation. You could rotate this to overlap them. Next one. Uh, well, these are not congruent, but you can make them congruent. So uh, the word for things that are not congruent, because notice these are different size. Of course, you can uh, dilate or enlarge this one to overlap that one. But as soon as you're having to change this, uh, the size, this no longer congruent. They are called similar. They have the same angles, but they do not have the same size. How about these two? Uh, those are congruent and you can uh, rotate one of them to overlap here to prove congruence. How about these? Uh, again, uh, they are not congruent because they are different sizes. They are the same shape, however, uh, so they are similar and a dilation or an enlargement could be used to uh, make one the same size of the other. How about these two? Uh, yes, they are congruent and you can use a translation, which is a slide. You can slide it over. Okay, so let's recap that. Congruence versus similarity. Uh, congruent shapes, like these two here, have, uh, you can see the angles labeled here and the same angles here. So they have congruent angles and congruent sides. So all three angles are the same. And then if you measure each side and compare it to the corresponding side, they will be the same also. Similar shapes, they look like the same thing, but one is a bigger or smaller version of the other. So they have you can see the angles here, same angles here. So they have congruent angles. For shapes to, to be the same shape, they need to have the same angles. Uh, but if one is smaller than the other, then the sides are not congruent. They are proportional. That means uh, you would have to grow them by the same amount. You cannot say, I'm going to double this one to make this, but I'm going to triple this one to make this. If you're doubling this one to create the new shape, you also have to double every other side. That's called proportionality. And that's how shapes remain similar. Okay, so let's recap uh, similar, congruent, or neither. Uh, we have this beautiful photo here. Uh, we have an image here and you can see it's three by four. And the question is, are is this one and this one, are they congruent? Are they similar? Are they neither? What do you think? I hope you said they are congruent because if you look at this one, it's also three units by four units. 
the angles are the same, 90 degree angles, it's both rectangles. So these are congruent images. Uh, is there a scale factor? Scale factor means did one have to grow to become the other one? Well, if they're congruent, it means they're the same sh uh, size already. So there is no scale factor. One did not have to grow. And you can check that by checking one dimension. So here, check the width here, three units, and here three. We divide those, we get one. That means you have to multiply this one by one to grow it into this one. And what that means when you're multiplying by one, it just stays the same size. Let's check the other side. Length of four, and here, length of four, divide those, scale factor of one. So basically it tells you, you did not have to multiply these sides by anything to grow them into this. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, how about this? Check these out, congruent, similar, or neither? What do you think? Uh, these are definitely not congruent. They are different sizes, uh, but are they in proportion? So let's check. It says similar, so it means they are in proportion. Let's check that. This was three units, and how long is this here? Ooh, four and a half units. Okay, divide those. Divide the bigger one by the smaller one, four and a half divided by three. We get a scale factor of 1.5. That means this side had to be multiplied by 1.5 to become this length. That's our scale factor, the growing factor. Let's check if the other side has the same proportion, because if it doesn't have the same scale factor, it's out of proportion and it's not similar. Let's check. This is four units long, and this is six units long, okay? Six divided by four also gives 1.5. So both the length and width grew by the same multiplier. That means they remained proportional, which means they are similar shapes. Okay, proportional, great. How about this next one uh, right here? Congruent, similar, or neither. In this case, hmm, it grew in size, so it might be similar, but we have to check scale factors, okay? Neither is the answer, why? Let's check. 5 divided by 4, hmm. this has a length of 5, but this one is 4. 5 divided by 4 is 1.25. That means this one had to be multiplied by 1.25 to grow into this one. But let's check the width also. 3 units and 4 units, okay? 4 divided by 3. Hmm, different scale factor, pretty close. That's why when you look at these, at first they might look like it grew proportionately. Nothing was warped one way too much, but these scale factors indicate that actually it was a... Uh, stretched, uh, the width was changed more than the height was. So it's a little bit out of proportion. So it's neither similar not con nor congruent. Okay, last one, and we also have a beautiful image here. Here's a beautiful image, another beautiful picture, and here's another one. Uh, let's recap this uh, idea of proportionality. Right now they're congruent, they're exactly the same size. However, I'm going to grow one. I'm going to grab it here and grow it this way. Oh, it's out of proportion. The, this length grew by some scale factor, but this didn't. And you can see it's out of proportion. So that's not similar. Okay, now let's delete that. Let's try again. Now it's congruent again because I have the same image. Now I'm going to pull it this way. Oh, it's out of proportion. So that's not similar because I scale factor on this side has... Uh, changed but this one here remains the same so one side grew more than the other so that's not uh proportional not similar let's make another copy here it's congruent and now if i grab the corner now both sides grow by the same scale factor it remains in proportion therefore it is similar okay let's keep going uh, there's a few more things to point out to you guys here so we have uh, what are called corresponding parts uh, if we have two triangles and all six parts are congruent, then the triangles must be congruent. And corresponding parts mean like matching parts. For, for example, AB congruent, this symbol means congruent to DE. So here's AB, here's DE. And by writing this, we're saying those two parts are identical in size, they are congruent. So, and we mark them on the diagram using a little line like that. So those are congruent, great. That is, those are called corresponding parts. Let's check another one, BC and EF. Now segment bc is congruent to segment ef great we have two parts that are the same next ac and df ac and df are congruent so we've shown that all sides here are congruent to all sides here congruent now let's talk about the angles because triangles have six parts they have three sides and they have three angles okay if these two triangles are congruent the angles are also congruent so angle a you can see congruent to angle d that angle that angle next Angle B and E is this angle here, congruent. And finally, angle C and angle F. 
And notice uh, we have different ways to mark these things. We can mark an angle like this with like one little line here. That means those two are the same. Or this last one we can see we use three lines and three, or three arcs, I guess, to show those are the same. Two different ways to mark that. But the point is, again, when we have congruent figures, in triangles in particular, all six parts will be congruent. The question is, oh, here we go, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. The question for you is this, do you really need to prove that all six parts are the same to be able to say the triangles are congruent? Do we need to show all six things or are fewer possible? What do you think? Well, the good news is uh, no, three parts. If you know just three parts are the same between two triangles, then that is enough to prove the two triangles congruent. So you don't have to prove all of this. If you can just prove three parts, you have shown the triangles are congruent. Uh, all right, so this is how we're moving into proofs. Let's keep going. Uh, before we look at proof things, let's look at one last detail. There's so many details here you have to know. Uh, and that is, if we only need to know three parts, so here's a triangle where we know three parts, uh, we need to know how to label those three parts. So in this case, we, are, we know one angle, we know one side, and we know another side. The question is, with these kinds of triangles, when we're comparing this to another triangle, we need to be able to say, what do we know? And we kind of say it in order. You can see here, ASS means angle, side, side. Do we know that about this triangle? Uh, or do we call what we know about this triangle SAS? Because I see that also, side, angle, side. So we need to pick one of these as the proper way to call this here. Which one is it? Because they both seem to work here, side, angle, side, angle, side, side. What do you think? Well, this one is an ASS situation, not SAS, even though it seems like it could be SAS, side, angle, side, why not? Uh, the way to deal with this is this. If you are figuring out a way to name a triangle based on the parts you know, you have to, okay, start somewhere, okay, angle, side, side, and the way you know you're going the wrong way is if you jump more than two parts. So for example, here we have angle, we went to the side, we skipped an angle, but then we said we know the next side. So we only skipped one part along our name here. Angle, side, skip this, side, that works. Let's look at the other way. Side, angle, skip a side, skip an angle, and then side again. That's why side angle side doesn't work. Along the way of naming this side angle side, we skip two parts. Let's look at it again. Side angle, skip, skip, and then side. We skip too much, so we know that in this case, we have to call this angle side side. Try the same approach here. Is this, uh, if we're naming what we know here, is this side angle side like this, or is this angle side, oh, sorry, uh, side side angle, because both of those seem to work. We know two sides and one angle, so which one? In this case, it is side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. We didn't have to skip anything. If we went side, side, angle, let's try. Side, skip an angle, skip a side, skip an angle, side. We skipped so many parts before we got to this, so this makes no sense, skipping too many things. Side, angle, side. Okay, with that in mind, name each of these. What do we know about this one? Easy, side, side, side. How about this one? Uh, is it this or this? Hmm. It can be either one of those because angle side side is the same as saying side side angle back and forth. But SAS is no good. Side angle side is no good because we're skipping too many parts on that journey. How about the next one? Angle angle angle. How about this one? Side angle side. How about this one? Okay. Angle side side. Or again, this could be backwards, but not SAS because we're skipping too many parts. Next one. Angle, side, angle is what we know. How about this one? Side, angle, side is what we know. This one, side, side, side. And last one, side, angle, angle, or you could have written it backwards, angle, angle, side. Great, I hope this uh, gets you comfortable with uh, saying what we know about triangles, the three parts we know. Because again, we need three parts to prove two triangles are congruent, so we need to know how to name the three parts we have. Okay, so key idea, if you've been uh, not noting anything in your notebook yet, this is the one thing you should. Uh, these are the rules for proving triangles are congruent. If you know the three sides are congruent of two triangles, see, we know three sides and we know these three sides are the same. If you know that about two triangles, then they must be congruent, side, 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 okay? Now, let's say you have a triangle and you know a side, angle, side, and it's the same as a side, angle, side in, a, in another triangle. That is also another way to prove two triangles are congruent. 
they must be congruent if you have that same combination of side angle side next one if you have an angle side angle and then the same angle side angle in another triangle those also must be congruent and finally if you know an angle angle or sorry angle angle side and the same angle angle side here those triangles must be congruent as well those are our four ways of proving triangles are congruent again you only need to know three parts not all six parts in each one what are the two missing things we see sss sas as aas what's missing here if you were to write letters like this for parts of triangles well the two missing ones are aaa and ass guess what those do not prove triangles are congruent in other words you can have two triangles that have the same angles but they're not the same triangle and likewise this and i'll show you why these don't work in just a moment for now what's the easiest way to remember what works and what doesn't for proving triangles are congruent well it's easier to remember the two that don't work the two that don't work are aaa and ass those are very easy to remember aaa that's easy ass that's a word we can remember easily those two do not work all the other ways work okay so here's the aaa situation which we just said does not work why not look these two triangles look the same they have the same angles they're the same size hey they look congruent but no wait one of these could also be bigger right because the angles don't tell you how big a triangle is it's the sides that make it bigger so we could still have the same angles but different sides all of a sudden these are not congruent they're similar but they're not congruent so that's why aaa is not enough to prove two triangles are congruent because you could have this situation now let's look at ass why does ass not work here's a uh, triangle where we have angle side side you can see 30 degrees 8 and 10 centimeters here we have another triangle that has a 30 degree angle 8 centimeters and 10. what happened here basically this 10 centimeter side can kind of rotate spin side to side and still create another triangle and both of these triangles have the same angle side side angle side side but they are two completely different triangles that's why knowing an angle a side to side is not enough to prove two triangles are congruent okay great so now looking at this one which shortcut can we use to say these are congruent we know three parts we know three parts hey check it out we can just say step by step these two segments are the same a b d e b c and e f are congruent and then a c and d f are congruent therefore side 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 therefore these triangles are congruent by the sss shortcut okay great next one how about this one what shortcut can we use here okay i hope you saw this one is angle side sorry side angle side side angle side because we have this part congruent to this then an angle congruent and then another side congruent so we have side angle side the same side angle side those triangles are congruent by sas next one which shortcut okay this time you have uh, asa because we have an angle the same as here a side here and another angle that's the same angle side angle angle side angle those triangles must be congruent and here we've listed all the parts we know so we're kind of developing a proof structure right we list the things we know and then we say therefore we know the triangles are congruent and the reason is this last one here what do you say okay in this case we have an angle the same okay then another angle and then a side so angle angle side angle angle side they are congruent by angle angle side and we can see here angle angle side you list the things you make your conclusion you say why perfect last step can you prove these are congruent and again you're checking for these shortcuts so you have this yellow triangle and you're trying to see which of the ones around it are congruent to it and again you're looking for either you have three angles the same an angle and angle side etc etc first step i'll give you a hint well you have all the sides here you have two angles well when you have two angles in a triangle you can easily find the third what's this sorry when you have two angles yeah can you find the third angle what is it well that angle is 25. now that you have that you can better compare to all these decide which of them are congruent okay to begin yes this one is congruent to the yellow one side angle side side angle side perfect two hey all the sides are the same all the sides are the same perfect three angle angle side hmm is it really angle angle side i don't know something doesn't look right there oh yes it is uh because we have no that should be a side angle side right or angle side angle that's wrong next one 
four, no way. When you look at it closely, there's not a match there where the angles are and so on and the side. That eight should be four here, no good. Five, side angle side matches this side angle side. And last one, no, we do have angle, 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 but again, remember that is not enough. Angle, angle, angle is not enough. It could be a different size. Last one, same thing. We have this right triangle. We have three sides given and one angle here. We have the 90 here. Well, we have two angles. Can we get the third one? Yes, we can. 70 degrees when you subtract 180. Now compare. Number one, oh, is this out of order? Number, oh wow, things are out of order. So let's check. Number one, side, 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 congruent, perfect. Number two, notice it says here RHS. What does that mean? That's another theorem, but it basically comes from uh, the side, side, side idea. If we know these three sides, and here we were given only two sides, but since it's a right triangle, we can always use Pythagorean theorem, and Pythagorean theorem allows us to find this side. So all of a sudden we have three sides the same. So it's side, 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 but you don't need to do that extra step. As soon as you see a right angle and two sides, it's enough to say, well, I know the third side's gonna be the same, therefore it's this other rule. Okay, uh, three, no way, doesn't work. We only know two angles in this. So it's, uh, that's, let's see, is that enough? No, the 13's in the wrong place, it should be a 12, no good. Four, angle, uh, it's written the wrong way again. It should be angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, it should be. Okay, number five, all three sides are the same. And number six, side, angle, side. Great job. I hope that recaps something you've seen. If not, I hope you've learned something and you're understanding the idea of proving two triangles congruent by knowing three common parts. All right, we'll see you soon.